We live in an age based on science and technology with formidable technological powers. Science and technology are propelling us forward at accelerating rates. That's right. And if we don't understand it, by we I mean the general public, if it's something that, oh, I'm not good at that, I don't know anything about it, then who is making all the decisions about science and technology that uh, are going to determine what kind of future our children live in? Just uh, some members of Congress? But there's no more than a handful of members of Congress with any background in science at all. And, but what's the danger of all this? I mean, you know, this is not the thing that... There, there's two kinds of dangers. One is what I just yeah. talked about, that we've arranged a society based on science and technology in which nobody understands anything about science and technology. And this combustible mixture of ignorance and power, sooner or later, is going to blow up in our faces. I mean, who is running the science and technology in a democracy if the people don't know anything about it? And the second reason that I'm, I'm worried about this is that science is more than a body of knowledge. It's a way of thinking, a way of skeptically interrogating the universe with a fine understanding of human fallibility. If, if we are not able to ask skeptical questions, to interrogate those who tell us mm -hmm. that something is true, to be skeptical of those in authority, then we're up for grabs for the next charlatan, political or religious, who comes ambling along. It, it's a thing that Jefferson lay great stress on. It wasn't enough, he said to enshrine some rights in a, in a constitution or a bill of rights, the people had to be educated and they had to practice their skepticism and their education. Otherwise, we don't run the government. The government runs us. Uh, it is this notion that, that science is of, not of great interest to us in some sense, that, that somehow we don't want to learn. You see, people read the stock market quotations and financial pages. Look how complex that is. People are able to look at sports statistics. Look how many people can do that. Understanding science is not more difficult than that. It doesn't involve greater intellectual activities. But the, the thing about science is, first of all, it's after the way the universe really is and not what makes us feel good. And a lot of the competing doctrines are after what feels good. There are millions of people who understand science does not prove religion because religion is faith-based. Faith. And therefore, you should do not deny the value of it because it is faith-based and not science. But let's, but let's, let's, look, let's look a little more deeply into that. What is faith? It is belief in the absence of evidence. Now, I don't propose to tell anybody what to believe, but for me, Believing when there's no compelling evidence is a mistake. The idea is to withhold belief until there is compelling evidence. And if the universe does not comply with our predispositions, okay, then we have the wrenching obligation to accommodate to the way the universe I mean, I think really you could, is. You, I mean, but I mean, you, so you step forward to say I deny all religion because I can't see no, it proved no, no, no. scientifically. No, no, no. You and see, the value it, it, of religious it, it, experience and the value of, of of, of reaching for higher experiences. Religion deals with history, with poetry, with great literature, with ethics, with morals, including the morality of uh, treating compassionately the least fortunate among us. All of these are things that I endorse wholeheartedly. Where religion gets into trouble, is in those cases that it pretends to know something about science. The science in the Bible, for example, was acquired by the Jews from the Babylonians during the Babylonian captivity of 600 BC. That was the best science on the planet then. But we've learned something since then. The trouble comes with people who are biblical literalists, who believe that the Bible is dictated by the creator of the universe 
to an unerring stenographer. And so therefore they... And, and has no metaphor or allegory. And from it. there they make their political and economic choices. Uh, and social and, choices. And scientific. And scientific choices. And scientific. And that's part of your problem with that idea. Exactly. It is that because for the wrong reasons we make the wrong choices about science. That's right. So who is more humble? The scientist who looks at the universe with an open mind and accepts whatever the universe has to teach us, or somebody who says everything in this book must be considered the literal truth and never mind the fallibility of all the human beings involved in the writing of this book. You convinced me a long time ago that it was arrogant for me or for anyone else to believe that there wasn't some life outside of our to exclude the possibility to exclude the possibility was right. was was to was an arrogance of intellect that we should not I still assume you couldn't prove it you didn't know it was there but the arrogance for you right we don't know if it's there we don't know if it's not there let's look and if you take that mm -hmm. why can't you say well, there's a lot we don't know I, there's I a say lot it. of power Here, there watch. that we there's don't a know. lot we don't know you know I, I, it's what i believe about but that doesn't mean that every Every fraudulent claim has to be accepted. We, we demand the most rigorous standards of evidence, especially on what's important to us.